All right, so we're gonna use our new favorite tool, Playwright, and our old faithful Scrapey, and so we can web scrape those really heavy JavaScript websites. Using Scrapey Playwright, we have access to Playwright within the Scrapey request. What it will do is it will use Playwright to load up the page, and it will then send the re response back to Scrapey, so we still have access to all of the Scrapey features that we know and love. So what you want to make sure you have is you need to make sure you have your virtual environment set up, pip install Scrapey and Scrapey Playwright, and don't forget to do Playwright install if this is the first time running Playwright. Okay, so now we've got everything installed, let's do our Scrapey, and we'll do start project to create a new project, and we'll just call this one PW Demo. Let's cd into the directory and we'll use the genspider command because we're going to be using a general spider here. So scrapey genspider and we'll just call this one pw spider and I'll just put in test.com because we're going to be changing all of this in just a minute. So now that that's done, we have all of our scrapey general files up here set up for us. So there's two that we need to change. We're going to need to change some of the settings and we're also going to need to edit the spider. So let's get these open. Now, within the settings, we need to add in a couple of Playwright specific things. I will leave in the description the link to the Scrapey Playwright GitHub that has these in it for you, uh, which you can copy and paste. Uh, and there's also some other cool examples in that. I'm just going to copy them over from it now. We need the download handlers here, and we also need this twisted reactor here. So I'm just going to put a comment above and I'm just going to write Playwright. Should I ever come back to this? I know what I did. That's all we need to do for the settings. I'm gonna remove these though, and we're gonna use the, the uh, start requests in Scrapey with self in there. Then we can yield out our Scrapey.request. So this all looks the same so far. We need to put our URL in here, but then we need to add in a couple of extra things. So we wanna do our meta is equal to, and a dictionary, and then we want to put in here Playwright is true. So this is basically all you need to do for a really basic setup to get Playwright to load the page that you give it, the URL, and then send the response back to Scrapey. So I've got the website URL over here copied, which I'm just gonna grab, and I'll paste this into our code here, and we'll go and have a quick look at the page. So this is it here, it's a, again, it's a test website and it's extremely JavaScript heavy. If you were to inspect the source, you would see the DOM and you would think, okay, this looks all right, this looks all right, we can work with this. However, in these sorts of websites, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you view the page source. If I line wrap this, you'll see this really important sentence. We're sorry, but this store doesn't work properly without JavaScript enabled. And this is why we need to use a browser to load this page so we can actually get past the browser check and load the elements and all the data so we can scrape it out. So let's close this and come back to our code. What we're gonna do here is we're actually just going to, when we get the response back, we're going to yield it out in a dictionary and we'll just say our text, response.text. So all this is gonna do is it's going to load Playwright, load this page up and hit us back with all of the text that it gets back. Now they should include all the HTML that we can access using our Scrapey selectors, item, all that stuff. So what to run this, we just do Scrapey crawl and then it was PW spider and uh, we'll do the output because we're gonna expect a lot of uh, stuff come back. We'll do output.json. So I'm going to run this and you'll see a couple of key things here. Launching browser, browser Chromium launched. That's a good sign. That means that we are actually opening up our Playwright browser, which is obviously headless, it always is. So we can see that we're getting information back. Now, one thing I want to show you, which is quite uh, important once we get past all of the <laughs> code that it sent back, is you can see here, look, we're getting and we're getting doing a get request to all of the JavaScript files, which is quite cool to see. So let's go and open up our output file. And we have this here, let's just move that out of the way. Now this looks like an awful lot of text and stuff. And if I come to the website again, we just look for the first product, which is called Oxford Loafers. Let's search in here, Oxford. Ah, no results. That's interesting because weren't we supposed to get back all of the, the DOM and the HTML back that we can actually work with? Well, yes. However, if I come back to the page and I refresh it, tell me what you see. So that means what's happened is 
Although we've used Playwright, we, all we've done is it's loaded the page up. As soon as it's found some information, it's sent that response straight back to Scrapey. So what it's done is it hasn't given it enough time to load up the actual page content that we're after, which is all of this. Now, this is probably going to be quite common. Fortunately, we can get around that. We can use the page coroutines, which will give us access to a certain set of actions that we can do, one of which is the wait for selector. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go to the inspect tool and we're going to go up to the top of the page and we're going to find a selector that we want to see. So this one here, this div with ID of product listing has all of the information for the products in it that we're after. So if we tell Playwright to wait until it finds this div before sending the response back, we should get all of our information back to Scrapey. Let's go back to our code. Let's close that out because we don't want that anymore. And we're going to change up our meta here a bit more. I'm going to get rid of this and we're just going to write the keyword dict so this all gets turned into a dictionary. Now we need to import in the coroutines at the top. So we'll do from scrapey playwright dot page because it's the page that we're going to be working with. We want to import page coroutine. Now it's these coroutines that's going to let us perform those actions. So within our dict we still need to have our playwright is equal to true. We still need that. But we also need to actually keep the page so we can work with it. Uh, and to do that, we need to do playwright underscore include page is equal to true. Without this, we don't have a page object to be able to work with to tell it to wait for. So now we have that, we can actually say that the playwright page coroutines that we want to use, a lot of playwright words here, page coroutines is equal to and it's a list and yes it does include the page coroutine thank you very much VS code for filling that in for me so here is where we can select what we want to do those actions like I said we wanted to wait for a selector now if you're doing your own project with this or if you're following along you can also put in a scroll function in here which is also quite cool which I'll show you another time so we can say uh, wait uh, for wait or selector and then we'll have a comma and then in here we'll say it was uh, I think it was div it was an ID so the hashtag product listing so what we're saying is that it's going to wait for this so it's going to use this page coroutine to find the selector before it turns the response now because we're using coroutines this is asynchronous so we need to put in the async keyword in front of our pass function otherwise it won't work properly so that's important. However, we don't need to do anything else here. So this should be good. So I'm going to clear this up and we'll do exactly the same thing. So we'll just call this one output one.json and it will do its thing and it will load the page up, hopefully wait for this selector and then send us back all of the stuff that we want in the response. So that's finished. So let's go to output one and we'll search for the word Oxford and I can see it there already. So we have this class card here with the information in. So you can see that if we didn't use these page coroutines that we wouldn't actually be able to use these actions like wait for selector and to scroll, which we really do need when we're working with pages like this that load the data dynamically once the page has been accessed. So from here, all we need to do is we need to just change our yield so we actually get the information that we want and just not a whole load of text. So we'll do uh, for product in response.css now we need to find the selector that's going to have all of that in and we'll put our yield in our response let's go back to the page and we're looking for that I saw a card uh, something something there so let's try and just find that uh, here we go card body so let's copy that and then underneath we have our h3 with the name so let's do div dot card body and we'll yield the title is going to be, we want to access the product.css and it was the h3. We'll try that and we'll do the double colon to ask for the text and then just dot get. So we get that information, just the first one. And then we'll do price and it will be product.css again. Let's go find our selector. And if we go down click on the select tool, hit the price. We'll see we get this label and it's kind of got nothing really here, 
But fortunately, there's this one above, this div class form group. So we can just say go here and then find this one really easily. So we'll do div dot form group space, find then label again, text dot get just like that. So let's get rid of that. And from here, we will then run our scraper again. Uh, this time we'll just call this products dot JSON. We'll hit enter. We'll see that it's launching our browser again. Load of good responses. Come back to products.json. And here we have our list of uh, titles and prices for the products that are on that page. So now that you have access to the actual response properly from the page object, you can do anything you like. You could do items, item loaders, all of the good stuff that we've talked about in Scrapey in my previous videos. And I'll just quickly show you that these are the products here. So any of these informa any of the information from here would be accessible. From here, you could use any of the Scrapey functionality, items, item loaders, saving to databases, pipelines, all of that stuff. All we've done is we've put Playwright in front of it to access the page and load it up for us, just like I talked about in this video here, which was my introduction to Playwright.